go traders let's do this yeah boom <laughs> I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. Welcome, traders. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome once again to another live, very, very special trading event. Very, very special today. I want to thank everyone for taking out some time out of their Saturday morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. I want to let you know that we are in store for what I consider to be a very, very special event. We're going to talk about the steps that every trader must know to become profitable. We're going to specifically talk about 10 things, traders, 10 things that will go a long way toward you, all right, becoming not only profitable, and if you're already profitable, more profitable, right? Follow these 10 things, and I promise you, your trading is going to exponentially prove, improve. Because what I've done is I've compiled the 10 things that typically stand in the way of a trader's profitability. Now, guys, I've been training traders for the past 28 years of my professional career and over almost three decades of training and trading, all right, I've distilled the vast majority of the errors made in the markets inside of these 10 things. And so we're going to talk about them very thoroughly this morning. So I want you to get prepared, be ready to take some notes. I'll try to take some of your questions, all right? But without further ado, let's actually, let's get started here. All right. Now, for the benefit of those who have no idea who, whom you're speaking to or who's talking to you, listen, my name is Oliver Velez, of course. I'm the founder of iPhoneTraders.com. Um, I'm also... Uh, the founder and creator of a company all the way back in the, in, the, in the early 1990s called Pristine Capital Management. Some people refer to the company as pristine.com. That company went on for about two decades to be one of the largest and most influential training organizations in the trading industry. 36 years as a professional trader, I was also chosen as the inaugural keynote speaker for the entire industry in the years 1999 and 2000. Traders, I have trained thousands of professional traders worldwide. Barron's ranked me and my organization the number one place to go to in the United States for professional trader training. All right, I'm the best-selling author of five Trading books on the topic of making a living in the markets. These five books are in five different languages, English, Spanish, German, Japanese, and Mandarin. All right, I train over 10,000 plus equity and forex and crypto traders right now as, we, as I speak. And I continue to be an international speaker and advisor to organizations in this industry all over the world. All right. This is an article very quickly that was written on me as the industry chose me to be the face of the active trading industry back all the way back in 1999 and 2000. Um, this is Barron's ranking me and my work number one in the United States all the way back in 1998. All right. This is an image of some of the books that uh, I have written in various different languages 
And this is where I'd like you to follow me should you not be doing so. Um, obviously, you're watching me on my YouTube channel, Oliver Velez Trading, either in English or Oliver Velez Trading in, in Espanol, if you're watching me in Spanish and, of course, in Brazil. I want you to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. I want to make sure that you click the bell in the upper right-hand corner. Um, I put a lot of work into ensuring that something comes, something of value gets released on my channel to you every single day, 365 days a year. My content is very valuable. It's designed to keep you stepping forward in your journey toward trading mastery. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn notifications on in the upper right-hand corner. All right. So, traders, step one. Remember, take notes, okay? Try not to take notes too copiously, though, all right? Too plentifully because I don't want you being distracted by your note-taking while I'm actually covering concept after concept after concept. So, um, do more thorough note-taking when you watch this presentation again. Do light note-taking as we go through the talk today. So step one is probably the most important step of all. It is setting a maximum loss per day. It continues to astound me, traders, how many people are operating in the markets trying to earn their living in the markets, trying to make money in the, in the markets without having a specific set maximum dollar loss amount per day that they operate through. This is the number one thing you must establish in your trading. And you have to make sure that you become disciplined enough to never allow a single day to ever exceed the number that you set for yourselves. Now, in my organization, I actually set this daily number for every single one of my traders. It is set by me. It is set by my organization. You see, every trader has to go through this matrix that you see right here. They start off at training level. Every trader starts off at training level. And what they're, they're given a $50,000 training account. They're told that their maximum share exposure on any given trade is 500. These are specific things that every trader should have. Total buying power, maximum share exposure amount. This is how we begin to build our trading plan, and the rules that are part of our trading plan. So we have a maximum share exposure number as well. And here is what we're talking about specifically in step one, the daily loss amount. No trader at training level can ever go beyond $200 down on any given day. Now, if a trader does pass the $200 down mark, let's say $201 or $202, they have six seconds to do the right thing. Six seconds to liquidate the account. Six seconds to get out of every trade. Six seconds to go flat. And if they fail to go flat in six seconds... I have algorithms that will auto-liquidate every single position that the account has, and they will go flat in the blink of an eye. Now, my traders are told that they should not allow my algorithms to save them because each time a trader allows my algorithm to do their job, that, that becomes a negative notation in their trading history. I want the trader to be disciplined enough to do the right thing. 
I want a trader to be disciplined enough to do the most important thing, which is to not lose money. Let me explain this to you. Listen, there are tens of thousands of traders who actually believe that their number one function, their number one job is to make money. And this is absolutely wrong, traders. Your job is not to make money. It is the market's job to make money. It is the market's job to go up or to go down. It is the market's job to behave. It is your job to kill the market when the market is not behaving. You see, there are tens of thousands of people who have their job in this game wrong. They're trying to win. That's not your job. It is the market's job to win. They're trying to make money. It is not your job to make money. It is the market's job to make money. They're trying to do the market's job. Let me give you an example. If you were to buy Apple at $130, at $130, and Apple goes from $130 to $135, what did you do except pray? Absolutely nothing. It is Apple that rose from 130 to 135. It is Apple that, that increased in price. It is Apple that made the money. It is the stock's job after you enter to do the right thing. Your job, your most important function in the trading equation is to kill the market, is to chop the stock's head off when it's failing to do its job. In a very real sense, you are an employer. The stock is the employee whom you've hired. The moment you enter a stock, you tell your employee, you either perform well on your job or you get eliminated. But where do you get eliminated? You have to be able to eliminate the stock, you have to be able to kill the game before ever touching your maximum loss per day. And if you can do this one step, if you can define a specific dollar amount, just like I've done here, guys, if you can define a specific dollar amount and you can make sure that there is not ever a single day that exceeds, all right, this maximum loss per day, you will have gone head and shoulders above what the vast majority of traders can do. Because I will tell you that this is at the root of a large portion of traders' losses. They don't lose consistently because they don't have a max loss and they don't, and if they do, they don't adhere to a max loss. Adhering to a maximum loss per day is going to make all of your losses start to become consistent. They will be consistently less than $200. And so you have to understand that the first act toward becoming a better trader is to lose consistently. Not to have your losses all over the place in all different types of sizes. To start losing consistently is the first act. And remember, it is not your job to make money. It is your job to not lose money. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing here. This is very important, very important. When I say it is not your job, it is your job to not lose money. You see, $200 is not money. When you lose 150, if your maximum is 200, anything under 200 is not losing money. Losing money is when you violate your maximum loss per day. 
you see $201 is now starting to lose money. Less than 200 is not losing money. Your job is not to lose money. Not to go beyond your maximum loss per day. Now, as I mentioned, I actually set this for my traders. And it is $200 at their training level. Now, what they have to do in order to get beyond training, training level, they have to make, they have to go into the markets and they have to make a cumulative net profit of $3,000. That's it. They don't have to make that in a day. They don't have to make $3,000 in a week. They can accumulate the 3,000 gradually over time. But once they have achieved $3,000, they have fully graduated the training level. And once they graduate the training level, that $50,000 practice account becomes a real account with $50,000 of buying power in it. And now they're going to have to repeat what they did for real. They have to achieve a $3,000 gain without ever losing more than $200 on any given day. You see, traders... You see, making $3,000 with $50,000, that's not the hard part. I told you stocks go up without your help. Stocks go up by themselves. Stocks make money without your participation. It doesn't need, the market doesn't need you to make $3,000. It's going to make $3,000. However, you have to make $3,000 responsibly by not allowing a maximum loss per day. You're going to be watched and evaluated how you make this $3,000. You're going to make this $3,000 responsibly, not like a gambler, not like a wild, uh, fanatical trader. You're not going to be all over the place. You're going to make that $3,000 in a very controlled, professional type of way. You see, it's not just the gain that you should be after. It's making the gain professionally. You understand? Making the gain in a way that, that clearly shows that you never allow the money to be at risk. This is what trading organizations look for in a trader. This is what Wall Street firms and hedge funds want to see in their traders. Not just a game. Not just gambling. They want to see a trader that never allows the market or a stock to put the firm's money at risk. And this is the attitude you should be taking with your money. You should never let a stock rob you of your future. You should never let a stock or the market take your financial life away from you. And so it's not just making the $3,000 that I'm looking for. I'm looking for how a trader makes that $3,000. I'm looking to see this, the trait that is the most important trait amongst all professional traders. They don't allow the money to drop very far, ever, ever. And so I know that I am belaboring this point, but it is number one on my list for a reason because I promise you every losing trader in every market does not do number one, step number one. But I guarantee you every professional trader you ever run into will have number one, step number one, in perfect control. So once my trader makes they the $3,000, they get 40% of the gain. 
I get 60% of the gain. Then they get $100,000. Now look what happens. Their maximum loss per day doubles. Now they have to make $6,000. They get 40% of the gains. I get 60% of the gains. And then on and on. What my traders are really after is achieving levels three and four. This is where some serious money can be made at levels three and four. Where they have a quarter of a million dollars, a half a million dollars, and they're their maximum loss per day jumps to 1,000 at level three and 2,000 at level four, and their goals go to 10,000 and 20,000 and so forth and so on. But again, this is what many traders lack. They lack a sophisticated step-by-step -step way to grow. They're Many, many traders don't have this. There's no stage-by-stage -stage progress that they're attempting to achieve in their trading. They're trying to go from zero to a 1,000 overnight, and that just simply doesn't happen, not only in trading, but in nothing else in life. And so this matrix is designed to teach a trader, to force a trader to trade responsibly, and to develop and grow stage by stage to grow into greater amounts of capital. All right? So don't forget step one, operating with a maximum loss per trade and practicing with everything you have, never allowing yourself to go beyond whatever maximum loss per trade you have determined is correct for yourself, all right? So $200 is ours, at least initially. Now, step number two, you must also set a maximum loss per trade. This is different. Step one was a maximum loss per day. Once you hit the maximum loss per day, you are finished for the entire day. This, at step two, is different. This is maximum loss per trade. Now remember, if you're going to work off of my model, you have a maximum loss per day of 200. You don't want to use, traders, you don't want to use all of your 200 on one trade, on one play. This is just simply not intelligent. You should every single day give yourself, give yourself multiple opportunities to win. That first trade of the day might be a loss, but you want to give yourself a, at least several more chances to not only recoup that loss, but to move yourself into profitable territory. All right, so never risk your entire maximum loss per day on a single trade. That's another form of gambling. So if our maximum loss per day is $200, our maximum loss per trade has to be a portion of the $200. And so I typically tell my traders to divide, they can divide uh, the maximum loss per day by four or by two, all right? Two gives yourself, gives the trader a wider loss amount. So obviously if we divide 200 by two, we're talking about a $100 loss per trade. If we divide by four, we're talking about a $50 loss per trade, all right? And so, let's, for purposes of our examples today, let's utilize $50. Sometimes I'll utilize the 100, but, but for the most part, let's utilize $50. So remember, 
you have a $200 max per day, but you are you have now a $50 a $50 max per trade. You're never going to allow a single trade, a single stock to take more than $50 away from you. Not $51.50. Not $51.10, 50 or less. And this as well, traders, this brings consistency to your losses. Remember, it is not your job to become a, a consistently profitable trader. It is your job to become a consistent, small, losing trader. It is your job to consistently lose small. It is your job to end the game. It is your job to cut when you're supposed to cut. It is your job to fire when you're supposed to fire. It is your job to close down when it's time to close down. It is the stock's job to become profitable. It is the stock or the market's job to go up or down. And if you get your job right, the market takes care of its portion all by itself. Too many traders have this backwards. They're out there sloshing around in the world trying to become profitable. They're looking at the wrong side of the equation. You can't become profitable. You can only become profitable a consistent, correct loser. And the profits after that come all by themselves. Remember, stocks go up without you. Stocks go down without you. They don't need your help. All right? All right, let's continue. So step three, we also need, now that we have the 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 correct loss per day and we also now have the correct loss per trade we need to take the correct loss per trade to help us determine what price range should i be trading with my maximum loss per trade your maximum loss per trade helps determine what price range you should be trading. Let's take a look here. We have a $50 maximum loss per trade. The one very quick way to determine whether you are dealing with the right price range is to find the stock's fat bars. Let's take a look here. Look at the stock. Look, this is Tesla. And this is a two-minute chart of Tesla, which means that every bar you see represents two minutes of trading. The red ones are two-minute bars and the green ones are two-minute bars, okay? Now, I want us to take a look at the fat bars. There's a fat one. There's a fat one. There's a fat one. All right, even, and there's a fat red one here. All right, fat red one. Now, if we take a look at these bars, let's zero in on this one. And I want us to judge what's the range of this bar. So this is more or less 579, more or less, at the low. And then at the high, we are more or less 582, 583. So what range is that? Let's say more or less this is a $3 bar. Now, professional traders can't trade less, less than 100 shares. My traders at their minimum trade 100 shares at a time. They can trade more, 
Remember, my maximum is 500 shares, but the minimum they can trade is 100 shares. They can't trade two shares, five shares, 10 shares. That is not allowed. They have to trade 100 shares at a minimum. Now, if the bars, if the solid bars based on 100 shares... If the bar, if I can only lose $50, my bar is $3. My big bars average maybe $3 to $4. A 100 share position that loses $3 loses $300. 100 shares measured by the the size of this bar loses from high to low this is how we judge whether we're playing the right price range this is three dollars plus again i lose 300 plus dollars if i lose this fat bar with 100 shares. I lose $300 if I lose this fat bar with 100 shares. I lose $300. This is even wider, I believe. I lose $400 if I lose that bar with 100 shares. So this is how we judge. We take the length of the, of the stock's solid bars and we use the 100 share rule. If I lose the entire bar, will I have a loss that's smaller than my maximum loss per day? Or on average, does this stock lose more than my average loss per trade? So we need to go to a price range where the bars, the sizable bars, don't lose more than 50. So let's take this stock. This is, this is Occidental Petroleum. It is in the, the, the mid-$20 range. Its solid bars are like that, even this red one is a fat solid bar now if i judge the size of this bar more or less let's call that 2450 and let's call this 24 and oh, this is 45 so point 45 and let's call this point 15 so if I, if I take these numbers into an account, this is a 25 cent, this is a 30 cent difference. Now, based on 100 shares, I would lose only $30. If I lost this bar, my loss would only be $30 with 100 shares, all right? Which means that this price range is perfectly fine for me to play. I need stocks that are closer to this price range because their bars, their fat bars, stay within my maximum loss of $50. Now, if my maximum loss per trade was $100, I could actually trade um, 200 shares or 300 shares of this stock most of the time. 300 shares with 30 cents only gets me a $90 loss. It stays within 
my maximum loss per trade of 100. And so this is how my traders are taught to know where to go to trade, what price range to should they trade in most of the time, and how many shares, how many 100 share lots are they allowed to take on a specific trade? If a solid bar is only, let's say, 20 cents, 100 shares would create a $20 loss. Now, if their maximum loss per trade is $50, this trader can up the trade to 200 shares and try to make more money because a $40 loss would still adhere to their maximum loss per trade of 50. Now, do you have any idea how many traders do not know what to trade, do not know what price range is perfect for them, and do not know whether or not they should play when they should play a little heavier or when they should play at the lightest. Most traders are just guessing. Most traders are just randomly trading. There's nothing rule-based that dictates what they're doing. They're not governed by rules. There's no trading plan in place that specifically says, okay, this trade is 100 shares. Okay, this trade is 300 shares. No, you can't trade that stock in that price range. But yes, you can trade that stock in that price range. And so when you start to get these things correctly, and when your size starts to be governed by your rules, when your losses stay consistently in a specific, specifically designed box, you start stepping into the professional world of trading. These steps may sound basic, but they're the governing foundational cornerstones of proper market play. Everybody wants to get out there and start look at indicators. They want this tactic and another tactic. But it doesn't matter whatever tactic, whatever strategy you use at the foundation of what you're doing must be rules that govern these things. Your maximum loss per day, your maximum loss per trade, the price range you go to with your maximum loss per trade, the specific stock that falls within the price range that allows you to adhere to your maximum loss per trade trade and knowing when to play light when to play medium when to play heavy when to play 100 shares when to play 200 shares medium when to play 300 shares heavy your plan should be dictating this not just some random walk that you think is going to produce consistency Random walks and decisions made randomly don't create consistency, traders. You can't be inconsistent and expect consistency to come from being inconsistent. Consistency comes from doing things the same way over and over and over again. All right, let us continue. So we've got the three steps. Let's move to step four. From a technical perspective, this is the most important step of all. From a technical perspective. I would say that step one is one of the key reasons the vast majority of traders lose money. They do not limit their losses consistently to a specific dollar amount. All right. Step four is the most important technical 
loss component of, of our trading strategy. I don't want my traders to lose more than one bar on the chart, no matter what they're trading. I do not want them to lose more than one bar. This is my one bar rule. And I'm going to share it with you all today. We're going to go back to Oxy here. My traders are told, now what you're, what you're looking at is uh, two moving averages on Occidental Petroleum here. This moving average, the blue one is called the 20 period simple moving average. And the red one is the 200 period simple moving average. All these moving averages do is sort of smooth out the data. The blue moving average is smoothing out the stock's data over 20 individual bars. It's giving you the average of the past 20 bars. The red one is giving you the, the average of the past 200 bars. All right. Now, my traders know that we don't trade without these two moving averages on the chart, and I'm going to speak about them a little more thoroughly later. My traders also know that they should be looking for power surges off of these two moving averages. Power surges. So take a look at the first bar of yesterday. This is yesterday's price data. May 14th, look at the surge off the area of the 200 period moving average. All right, so this is one of the things they're taught to look for, surges off the 200, surges off the 20. We've got two moving averages and surges off of them are very interesting plays, all right? They're also taught, the color changes off of the moving averages. So we've got surges. This is a surge, a power bar, off the area of the 200. A color change, let me, I, let, me, let me show you what this is. This is a color change. Let's say you have a green bar. And you have a red bar followed again by a green bar. This is the point that green turned the, 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 that this bar turned the market back to green from red. It temporarily switched to red, but green took the market back by eliminating the high of the red bar. At the moment green takes out the high of the red bar, my traders are taught to strike, buy. Say they buy 100 shares, all right? So they're taught to do two things. Well, many things, but these are two things. They're taught to buy into surges off the 200 and the 20. They're also taught to buy into color changes where green takes away a red bar. Now, look at the color changes here. Take a look. Green takes away this red bar green takes away this red bar and so there are two color change plays here boom they buy that green bar as soon as it passes the high of this red bar there's another one Boom, they buy that bar as soon as the green bar passes the high of the red bar. I call this the color change play. All right, here's another little one here. Boom, green 
eliminates the high of that red bar. Now, now that you know the two main things, all right, surges and color changes, where does this, where does the only lose one bar come into play? Well, it's simple. If my traders are going to buy into this bar as it's surging off of the 200, they cannot lose more than this bar. So if the stock were to drop and break the low of one of the bar, they would immediately exit the trade. They're not allowed to lose more than this one bar. If they, if my traders buy into this green bar as it surpasses the red bar, that's the color change play, right? They can't lose more than that one bar. If the stock were to drop and break the low of the bar that they jumped into, boom, they immediately exit the trade. If my traders buy into this green bar, they cannot lose more than that one bar. If the stock drops below the low of that bar that they jumped into, they must immediately exit the trade. Now, traders, listen to me carefully. This is very important. Very important here. Listen to me. There is nothing more from a technical perspective. There's nothing more important than this step. Step number four. If I can get you to only lose one bar on every single losing trade, if I can help you get you to the point where that's just automatic, that you never lose more than one bar, I guarantee you, you're going to be a profitable trader. I get this is the number one way to almost instant profitability. Step four, limit your losses to one bar. Now, when you win, you're going to win eight bars. But every time you lose, you'll lose one. When you win, you might win 20 bars. But every time you lose, you'll lose one bar. You might win four bars, you'll lose one. You might win six bars, you'll lose one. You might win two bars, you'll lose one. You might win one bar, you'll lose one. You might win 50 bars, you'll lose one. You'll have many different types of wins, but you will never have a different type of loss. Your loss will always be one bar. Do this, and I promise you, it's freaking guaranteed that the winners will take care of themselves. You see, this rule makes you into the perfect cutter. I want you cutting the stock when it needs to be cut. I want you chopping the stock's neck off when it needs to be chopped off, and that's limiting your losses to one bar. Now, listen to this. The one bar loss must be within the maximum loss per trade. Do you follow what I'm saying? If your maximum loss per trade is 50, the one bar loss point must be less than 50. Now, what if, what if I buy into this bar? Boom, okay? This is the low of the bar. But if I buy into the bar and I get out at the low of the bar, and if that getting out at the low of the bar represents a loss of $60, not less than $50, that's not my play. I have to skip that play. I have to adhere to the one bar loss rule, but I also at the same time must adhere to step three maximum loss per trade or or step number two maximum loss per trade i have to adhere to 
all of them at the same time. Maximum loss per day, maximum loss per trade, and one bar loss amount. So your one bar loss amount must always be within the confines of your maximum loss per trade. And if it's not, because sometimes it won't be, you can't take that trade. It's every trade's not yours. Every trade does not have your name written on it. Every trade doesn't come neatly decorated with a bow and a tag with your name on it. Some trades just aren't yours. Your plan won't allow you to take certain trades. And you must do it. Now, there are times when you can't take 200 shares but you might be able to drop back and take 100 shares. That's fine. But if you can't adhere to the plan with 100 shares, you can't go below 100 shares. So that trade is not yours. Okay, very important point there. Very important point. All right, let's go. So by keeping your loss limited to one bar, look at this. This is your risk. This is your risk. But look at your potential. So this is what you're going to lose. But this is your potential win. Look at that. Here's your loss. Look how small that is. Now, how many of these loss amounts fit inside of the win amount? Wow. That's how you stay in this game forever. You make sure that on average, your losses are much smaller than the potential win in the game. Look at this play. This is your loss amount. This is your risk unit. That's what I teach my traders to call it. This is your risk unit. Always know your risk unit. But this is your potential win in the play. Now, I always say this is the upside down um, snowman, right? So I'm going to put some Oreo cookies here like I used to do as a kid. All right. Nice little snowman. Let's give him a little hat here. A little hat there. A little carrot for a nose. Some twigs off of a tree for his hands. And, uh, Go into the closet and grab some old boots or something like that. I used to do as a kid. I want my traders playing the snowman game. Do you understand? I want the head to be the loss. I want the body to be the gains. In this fashion, you can lose two, three times in a row and get one winning trade, and it wipes out all of the three losses. This keeps you in the game. This keeps you consistent. Keep your risk unit limited to one bar, and you will be in this game forever. All right, let's take a look at another play, this is Uber. We're looking at Uber here, right? Again, two minute chart. Every bar represents two minutes of trading. We've got the 20 period moving average and we have the 200 period moving average. All right. Now, as a general guideline, when our stocks are above the moving averages, we tend to look mostly for moves to the upside. When the stock is under the moving averages, we look for moves to the downside most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. All right. So we've got the stock Uber is above the moving averages. All right. So we're going to look for upside movement because we are above the moving averages. Now, let's find the color changes. Do you see them? Do you see the color changes? When does green wipe out a red bar? Right here. Boom. Let's come from way over here. 
boom, right there. Where is your risk unit? One bar, one bar loss rule. That's my risk unit. This is the potential win. That's the snowman right there. All right, this is, again, I'm not randomly, I'm not going back and cherry picking things for you. I'm using every example from yesterday. This is just yesterday. All right, let's take a look at another color change. Look at this one. Green, boom, takes out red. What's your risk unit? The one bar risk unit. The one bar rule. And even here is your potential. Okay. Boom. Boom. What's your risk unit? Under that bar. That's really small. So do you see this? This one's a little bigger. and You have to make sure that because this risk unit is a little bigger, does it adhere to my $50 maximum loss per trade rule? Let's go over it. So I'm entering here, more or less. Let's call that 30, 45, 30. And then low. Let's call that 45, even. That's 45, 30, 45, even. All right. I will lose $30, all right, if I get stopped out. That's far below my maximum loss of $50. I can play this. Boom. This one, I can probably play. This one, I can play 100 because 200 I would lose $60. This one I can probably play 200 because it's smaller. And this one I can probably play 300 shares. That's very small. And I love that sound. That's it. Beautiful. I will tell you. If we stop right here. And you do these four things. Oh my God, traders. If I can get you to never lose a specific dollar amount on any given day. Let's say that's 200. If I can get you to take that 200 divided by four or two if you want to give yourself more room, but let's say four, and I can get you to concentrate in the right price area to trade the Ubers of the world, to trade the, you know, the right stocks in the right price range. If I can get you to never lose more than one bar ever. The, you will be doing your job. And in the market, will do its job. The market's going to go all by itself. The market's going to win all by itself. You can throw darts at a list of stocks and play these four things, play utilizing these four things. And I promise you that you, out of every 10 trades, you'll have a few of them you're going to have to cut and you'll have several of them go. But the ones you cut will be small and the ones that go will more than wipe out and make up for those losses and throw you into profitable territory. You don't even have to be a good stock selector as long as you limit your loss to one bar. You don't even have to choose well. 
you'll be doing what stands in the way of consistent profitability. Limiting your losses stand in the way of consistent profitability. Now add some skill at selecting the right things and then that throws you way over the top. All right, traders, very important. Basic but extraordinarily powerful. These are the foundational cornerstones upon which proper trading takes place. Take a look at MU here. Uh, MU, again, a two-minute chart. This is the opening bar of the 14th Friday. Now, remember I told you that my traders, they look when the stock is above the moving averages. See, above the 20, above the 200. They're looking for upside. Unless the stock opens too far above the moving averages. If the stock opens, opens too far above and gives them a red bar, they bet the opposite way. All right? You can be too far away from your moving averages. Stocks can get far away. They can't stay far away. They can get far away. They can't stay far away. So in this case, MU opens far away and then gives my traders a red bar. Remember, I want them jumping into surge bars. Do you remember that? We do color changes and surge bars. I want them jumping into surge bars. This is a surge bar. I want them jumping into that bar. In this case, they're betting on the way down. They're shorting. If they enter into this surge bar, as it's forming, they're going to protect themselves with the one bar rule. Now this one bar rule must meet your $50 maximum loss per trade or your $100 maximum loss per trade, whichever one you have. All right. And if we look at this, let's say this is uh, 55 and let's say this is 80. So we're well within, um, it's about, let's call that 35 cents. So they're going to lose $35 with 100 shares. They're well within their $50 maximum loss per trade. Now look at the risk unit. Always know your risk unit. And here's the potential. And there's your snowman. When we play short, the snowman is on its feet. And when we play long, the snowman is on its head. Boom. There we go. Now, this is a beautiful NFT. Somebody NFT this. Non-fungible token, do it, do it. Somebody NFT it for me. Boom, that's professional snowman trading. All right. Beautiful. Remember I told you I like surge bars off the moving averages. Now, this play is to the upside. All right. This is not only a color change bar. 
It's a surge bar off the 200. We're moving. Beautiful. What's your risk? You know the risk. That's your risk unit. Now, I'm trying to grow that snowman. Okay? Beautiful. I love it. I love this game. Facebook. This is Facebook. Again, operating off of Friday. First bar of the day. Boom. I'm okay. That's a powerful green bar, not a red bar. It's a powerful green bar. Remember, surge bars, I'm okay with my traders jumping into that bar, but they've got to be willing to limit their losses to that one bar. That might be a little too sizable in this price range for the traders at the lower levels. All right. 311 and change to 30950. That's losing too much. All right. Unless they are at a different level and have maybe a $300 maximum loss per trade or something like that. But anyway, this would be the proper way to play it. Boom. Risk unit. Now let's go. All right. And so that's. The all-important step four, don't lose more than one bar. Take a look at this one. This is um, Carnival Cruise Line. Boom. Nice, fat, solid, surge green bar. I call them elephant bars. This is my risk unit. And as I can see here, we got a nice little tight risk unit. Let's call that 30 cents. We're in. Color change. Boom. Green above red. Look at this risk unit. Beautiful. Here's another one. Color change, here's this risk unit. Not allowing yourself to lose more than this one bar. And they're all over the place here. Beautiful. This is the most important of all from a technical perspective. Traders, you put those four things together and you've got the proper foundation. After that, there are a few things we can do, but a lot of it is just now, just trade, get through trades, which I'm going to talk to you about. You can't do this. You can't become good at this staring at a screen you have to trade you can't become good at this studying you have to trade you can't be good at this reading books all right you have to trade i'm not saying reading books can't be of some help but you have to trade to become good at this but you got to trade correctly and those first four things put in the foundation that forces you to trade correctly, all right? I'm constantly telling my traders that the development, the, the, the traders in development, that success is on the other side of your experience. How can you have success before you have experience? How does that happen? How can you be good at something before you become experienced at something? It's not possible, right? I mean, when we sit down and we think about that, we get that right. That a professional soccer player has had years and years of playing the game. Years from a little kid. 
experienced. Everyone really, really good at something. They became good on the other side of experience. They did not become good before experience. But yet everyone wants to become good before they become experienced. No, it doesn't work that way. You're going to be bad before you become experienced. It is going to be through experiences of being bad and sometimes being good and sometimes being bad and sometimes being good that you become deepened in your experience. And it is after a certain amount of experience has been accumulated will you start to see wonderful things. Everyone wants to rush this process. But it doesn't work that way. Now, here's the thing. You can get the wrong experience and actually go backwards. I get so many traders that come to me and say, Oliver, I've, I've got experience. I've been trading for six years. But they have been six years building the wrong experience. Which means that not only do they not have experience, they've got negative experience. They've got to recoup the negative experience, make all kinds of corrections before we get back to square one to start building the right experience. So you have to be careful. You don't want to start collecting the wrong experiences. You give a child the wrong experiences and they become a very terrible adult, right? All right. And so you give a trader the wrong experiences and they become a terrible trader. You have to be careful with the type of experience you're accumulating. Your negative experience can get so deeply ingrained in your trader DNA that you can reach the point of no return. All right? There are people that go so far off the deep end that there's no way to correct them. They're just broken. You do not want that happening to you. And I am telling you, the first four steps will ensure that you are gaining the right experience every single trade. And whether the trade is a win or a loss doesn't matter. It ma All that matters is that each day, each week, you are growing your experience and you can't grow your experience and get worse. It's impossible. If you grow the right experience, you by law will become better. You may not feel like it in the beginning, but you will. It has to be the right experience, though. And the first four steps will ensure that. Okay, let's get back. All right. So step five, trade with the 20 period moving average. Now remember I talked to you about the two moving averages, the two main moving averages we, we utilize. Um, the 20 period moving average and the 200 period moving average. Now, as a general guideline, I want you to note whether the 20 period moving average is rising or the 20 period moving average is declining. When the 20 period moving average is rising, your best bet is to be a buyer. If the 20 period moving average is declining, your best bet is to be a seller. All right? So we play in the direction of the 20 period moving average. This will keep you out of trouble. This will ensure that you're playing with the power, with the trend, with the flow, and not against it. This will ensure that you're not swimming upstream, making an already complex, difficult activity called trading even more complex and more difficult. We want the wind behind our backs. We want the power on our side. We want to bet with the winning side. And the 20 period moving average tells us who the winning side is. If it's rising, the buyers are the winning side. If it's declining, the sellers are the winning side. Now, knowing this, we're going to ignore 
anything that tells us if the 20 period moving average is rising, we're going to ignore, we're going to ignore everything that's red. And we're going to pay attention more to green removing red and green surges, green surges, green removing red, green surges removing red. We are not going to to see this red and think that we that that we we should be playing to the downside. This is a mistake. The 20 period moving average rising is saying don't be intimidated by red. It's only temporary. It's fake. It's not real. Don't get scared of the color red. The 20 period moving average is saying that we have nothing to fear during the temporary periods that the stock goes down. When the 20 period moving average starts getting flat, that's a different story. I'm talking about when it is rising, red doesn't matter. We play to the upside. And what do we play? Remember, we play surges, we play green surges and green color changes. Always keeping in mind what our risk units are. The one bar loss rule. All right. Do you understand this? Let me know. Do you understand this? I want to see you. Can, is it possible for me to see you? Let me see. I want to see if I can see you. Tell me if you understand. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? You got this. You understand this. We're going to trade in the direction of the 20. 20 is rising. We don't focus on the red bars. 20 is declining. We don't focus on the green bars. You got it? All right. Someone's asking, can this be applied for Forex? What I'm teaching you today is applicable in every market and every time frame. Options, bonds, stocks, uh, a crypto market, any market. It's universal. Right? That's what you, you want your plan to be universal because what's What's right is universal. All right? You know, sound market play is not automatically not sound because you go to a different market. The, 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 what makes up sound market play is universal. Universal one bars loss universal maximum loss per day universal maximum loss per trade universally trade in the direction of the 20 guys let me explain this to you i did a six month evaluation on every losing trade from my traders all right every losing trade we just jumbled all the losing trades together and we did a study on the losing trades it was something like 86 percent of every losing trade violated step number five trading against the 20 period moving average 86 percent i'm going to repeat that 86 percent of all the losses over a six month period broke rule number five. They were trades against the 20 period moving average. Now think about this. This statistic suggests 
that 86% of your losing trades will, vi will be because you violated this law, this rule. What if you don't, what if you don't violate this rule? This potentially means that you gain back 86% of your losses. Think of converting 86% of all the losses you experience to winning trades or break even. Wow. That's crazy. That's how important this is. All right. All right. So I'm saying, how do, how do we know when to take profits? Good question. It's a little bit beyond the scope of our talk today. But generally, generally, my traders know that we take profits when the stocks move away from our moving averages. Away from the moving averages, it's time to take profits. I'll talk a little bit more about that. All right. All right, let's go back here. Boom. Okay. Guys, here's that Uber trade again. Look, the 20 per moving average is rising, which tells us don't get fooled by red bars. Don't let the red bars shake you don't let the red bars make you nervous don't let these red bars make you drop your valuable asset you stand your ground and we're gonna place our faith in the upside momentum all right not in the temporary red bars so what are we looking to do we buy surges boom surge we buy surges that take out red we buy greens that trade above red we buy greens that trade above red we don't play red bars when the 20 period moving average is rising we ignore red bars do this, and I promise you, you're going to eliminate a big portion of your losing trades. It's not enough to keep your losses small. Traders, listen to me. It is not enough to keep your losses small. You can get cut and bleed to death. You can have a million little cuts and bleed to death. So the first four things help you keep your losses small. And it's very important, but it's not quite good enough because what if you just lose little a million times? All right? It's the same as losing a few times big. So not only must you keep your losses consistently small, which the first four things do, when we get into step five, it's now playing a certain way that eliminates many of your small losses. So yes, all the losses are small, but we're going to eliminate at least half of the, of the, of the small losses following the 20 period moving average you make the 20 period moving average your friend all right and there are other things i can teach you about this like for instance um if we go if we go to look, look to the left you see where the stock and the 20 are tight together that's when you can get an explosive move when your stock originates its life from a tight position now, you see how the moving averages now separate and go wide? The game is over. You see, the game from narrow state is a beautiful game. From a wide state, the game is over. The most explosive moves 
above the 20 are going to come from a narrow state when all three items, my 20, my 200, and my stock are all clustered tight together, not wide apart like that. So we can't play the color game up there. We can't buy into bars from wide states. We only do it from narrow states. I would say we stop right there. No more. No more. Not even this one. Too wide. So there are many other things like this that I can teach you that go beyond the scope of our, our talk with these five things. There's so much I want to teach you that will keep you rooted in very sound market play. But we're going we're gonna to try to stick religiously to the 10 things this time. All right? Okay. Um, notice in this case, I've got the 20 period moving average. This is Twitter, guys. I got the 20 period moving average moving down. It's telling us bet downward. Bet on a move down. It's telling us don't get shaken by green bars. They're temporary. Don't get fooled by the green. Don't let the green shake you out. All right? Who are you when the green bars happen? Do you get scared? Do you start crying? Do you stick your head in the ground and pretend like you're an ostrich? Do you get shaken out? Do you eliminate the trade? Are you weak? Are your hands weak? Or do you remain strong as long as that 20 period moving average is declining? I want my traders remaining strong. Now, how do we play? We play surges. Boom, red surge. Boom, red surge. Boom, you see that? I love those. We play red surges. Boom, red surge. We play red surges. Boom, we play red surges, boom, in the direction of the 20. We also play red bars removing green bars, boom, red bar removes the green bar right there. Remember what you're supposed to do? If you're entering here, as soon as red crosses below green, your risk unit, look at that small risk unit and look at the potential when there's your snowman all right beautiful red eliminates green boom look at your risk unit red eliminates green 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 guys this is boring now but it's good, but it's a it's a good boring. Many people, many, many people traders are out there. They are overcomplicating this game. You, you, you realize that they're making this game far more complex than it really needs to be. You see, traders, the market is not complex. The market is not difficult. You're complex. You're difficult. You bring your complexity to the game and you make it complex. You bring your difficulty to the to this simple game and you make it difficult. You bring your lack of a trading plan to the game and you expect it not to be hard. You bring your lack of discipline to the game and you expect it not to be hard. You bring your faulty ideas, your erroneous beliefs, your lack of a strategy, your gambling ways, your limited amount of capital, like you can show up to a gunfight with a knife and win. You do all of these things and then expect good results. It's not the market that's hard. It's not trading that's so difficult. You are the difficult one and you've got to stop. 
You've got to make sure you show up to this game with the right amount of capital because little amounts of capital don't work. I don't care what the marketing of, of various organizations say. You can't play this game with little baby pieces of money. It doesn't work. You can't play this game without a well-defined trading plan. You can't play this game well without accumulating the right experience first. You can't play this game if it is if you're not abiding by a proper rule-based approach. You can't do it. This trading well doesn't just fall from the sky. It just doesn't happen one day. And so many people are out there, you know what they're doing? They're just, they're, they're, doing, they're doing the same thing every day, losing practically every day, and just waking up the next day and hoping, just hoping that today is somehow magically going to be different from yesterday. Not changing anything, mind you. Not even knowing what should be changed, mind you. Just simply waking up and praying, I hope today is different from yesterday. Like good trading just spontaneously shows up like an angel. <laughs> like, really? You've got to put in the work. It's got to be done strategically. You become good good with the right practice with the right experience with the right rules in place with the right discipline step by step there's a process to this it just doesn't appear and so i get all the time people say oliver why do so many traders fail and these are the reasons i'm telling you they don't have a maximum loss per day they don't have a maximum loss per trade that they, in a disciplined way, adhere to. They don't know, have a, an approach or a method that tells them, don't play this price range, play that price range. And don't take this trade, take that trade, and do only 100 shares on that trade, but you can do 300 shares on that trade. And only play in the direction of the 20 period moving average. And please, by all means, don't lose more than one bar. There's very few traders applying things like that intelligently to their market play. You know what they're doing? And rolling the dice. That's what they're doing. As if that's going to generate a consistent life as a trader. It's mind boggling to me. I've been trading traders for 28 years, and to this very day, it's mind-boggling how people actually think they're supposed to be good in the beginning. How are you good in the beginning of something? No one's good in the beginning. I'm not talking about the freaks out there that somehow they're able to play basketball like a pro coming out of their mother's womb. I'm not talking about that. That's so rare, it's not even worth mentioning. I am talking about what applies to 99.9% .9 of the people on the planet Earth. You cannot be good at something at the beginning. You're supposed to be bad. But you're supposed to become better and better through building the correct amount of experience. How many people know this realize this and start going to work on building the right experience so that down the line they can become good no no very few people want to put in the work i don't want that to be you but very few people out there want to put the work in very few people want to methodically build their experience trade by trade the right way they just want it to magically occur traders and this is why there's a 92% failure rate in this business because no one wants to put the proper work in. Breaks my heart sometimes. Breaks my heart. But not you. It's not going to be you. All right? You're mine now. I don't allow... <laughs> when you become mine, I don't allow you to do these things. You got to do the right thing.
you know, got to do the right thing. All right, guys. Let's go. Let's go. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. All right, let's go. All right. So we're trading with the 20 period moving average. Guys, here's here's another here's another part of the day with Twitter. Again, look at what the 20 period moving average is telling you. Remember what I told you about narrow than wide? Look at how you're more narrow here. And look at when you go wide. Look at the stock is wide away from the 20. The 20 is wide away from the 20. Whereas that here, they were relatively close. And here, they go wide, right? Game is over wide. Game is just beginning. Power surge. Boom! When it's narrow. Narrow to wide. Over. Done. Repeat. Narrow in Wide, out, repeat. Narrow, in, wide, out, repeat. So if we think about this, look at this beautiful power surge. Remember I told you we like surges off the 200 or off the 20. I don't care which one. That's a beautiful surge red bar off the 20. Boom! What's my risk unit? That one bar. Look at this green bar. Red bar. Breaks the green. Here too. Red bar breaks the green. Red bar breaks the green, but not this one. You know why? Because we're starting to get a little too wide here. But my traders are taught that if you get in near the 20, you can take some profits away from the 20, see? And you get in a little near, you don't have to be touching, but you can take some profits away. You get in a little closer to the 20, you can take some profits away. The market has this tendency to be go near, away, a little nearer again, Away, a little nearer again, away, you see? And once we go wide, that's when you can possibly start going back the other way. All right. So good, 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 good. Okay, step number six. Enter, I was just saying this. Step six, enter trades near the 20 period moving average. I already told you trade in the direction of the 20, but I also want you entering near the 20 unless you're at the open. At the open, it's different. But here, you see this power surge? It's near the 20. It doesn't have to be touching, but it's near it. And that's beautiful. This is not that far from the 20. Again, I'm not saying it has to be touching. I'm just saying don't be entering trades up here. Let me show you. Don't be entering trades way up here because there's a color change way up here. And you're entering here, and this stock is way up uh, far away from the 20. This is not your trade. I want you near the 20. You don't have to be touching it, but I want you near the 20. I want you near that 20. I want that, that power surge near the 20 or near the 200. We've got two moving averages, really. All right. This is number six, near the 20. Get into your play. Power surge near the moving average. All right? We're going to buy this green bar, taking out that red bar. You're not that far from the 20. But see this green one? Removing this red, that's not yours. You are too far away from the 20. But this one is yours. Green removes red. Boom! You are near the 20. You are near the 20. 
near the 20. Away from the 20? No. Away from the 20? No. This is when you should be thinking about profit taking. Near the 20 get in, near the 200 or 20 get in, away from the 20 get out. Near the 20 get in, away from the 20 get out. It's not rocket science. If you've got the intelligence of a 10-year-old, you can play this game very well. In fact, I have a trader kid, I have a trading kids program and my 10 and 12 year olds out trade you. You know why? You know why my kids out trade you? Because they don't overcomplicate things. I tell my kids, you see that blue line? It's going up. The 20 per moving average is rising. Just go that way. And they just go that way. But, the, you know, the adults will overcomplicate things. Well, Oliver, yes, uh, I know I should be trading uh, a lot. I should be trading with the 20 period moving average. But wait a minute. What happens when the the overall market is going down and the 20 period moving average on my stock is going up and planet Mars is in orbit and planet Saturn is not in orbit? That, 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 that. See, that's the mindset of an adult. There you go, complicating things, All right? 20 periods moving average is rising, nothing else. We're betting to the upside. 20 period moving average is declining, nothing else. We're betting to the downside, period. We're getting in near the 20 and getting out away from the 20. Getting in near the 20, getting out away from the 20. Repeat, 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 repeat. Buying two things, surges off the moving averages, Color changes near the moving average. Away from the moving averages, take profits. Repeat, repeat, repeat. But wait a minute, Oliver. What happens on a Thursday when da 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 and the company has earnings and da 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 da? da. <laughs> the kids don't do that. They just do what there's what you tell them. And you know another thing. Another reason the kids outperform the, their, their parents, they haven't, the 10 and 12 year olds, they haven't gotten to the place where money means that much to them. So when they lose, it's no big deal. All right, this, when, when the stock stops out and they lose one bar, it's like, okay. It's like a video game to them, you know? Like, they, they, you, they're so used to video games where they're, they get blown up. And they're like, ah, oh, man, just for a second. And then what do they do? Reset, and they're back to playing. Like nothing happened. But the adult is like, oh, my God. Ah, I lost. What happened? What went wrong? Something happened. What went wrong? What should I change? What should I adjust? Why did I lose on this one? That, 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 that. And so if I can just get my adults to be a little bit more like my 10-year-olds and my 12-year-olds, they would do a lot better, some of the developing adults, you know? So what's the moral of what I'm telling you here? Don't overcomplicate these things I'm explaining to you, all right? Don't, don't, um... Don't mistake the simplicity for lack of power. These things are possessed with huge power, especially when you put them all together. All right, and there's no need to add to anything. There's no buts, no buts, no but. Get your buts out of the way. No buts, no ifs, no what ifs. Just keep it simple, all right? All right, guys, let's go back. Let's go back here. All right, look at this. Look at the sur Look at the surges off the 200. Look at the surges off the 20. Look at the color change. Boom, that's fine. But up here, you're starting to get too much distance. But here, no. Boom, look at my risk unit. 
I love that. All right. Boom. Boom. No, profit taking here. So you don't want this green bar. You see, you don't want that one. You've risen too far off the 20. You've come back toward the 20 here. Now you can start the game again. Boom! But not here. So again, near the 20 in, away from the 20 out. Near the 20 in, away from the 20 out. Number six, keep this near the 20 concept and you'll be just fine. Power surge, boom, off the 20 period moving average. Color change, see that red? Boom, you're not far up here away. You can take that one too. All right. Look at the narrow state I taught you. Now look at the state getting a little wide on us, see? So it's from here we can blast off. But as we widen, the game gets a little less reliable. All right. And we looked at this before. There's another one. Here's power surge, guys off the 20 and the 200 at the same time. Now guys, think about that. If I tell you you can play surges off the 20 and surges off the 200, what do you think you're supposed to do if it's a surge off the 200 and the 20 at the same time? That's crazy. Wow. Look at, look at this surge coming from both of them. Wow. Color change. Boom. Beautiful. Don't forget your risk unit. You buy here, your risk unit is there. All right, but if you buy here, your risk unit is here. That's got to fit. All right, don't forget to apply that one bar risk unit. All right, we've looked at oxy before, but you're getting surges off the 200. You're getting color changes off the 200, not too far. But you want to start being really careful now. I don't want you taking this one. You see that one? You're not going to take that color change there because you're a little too wide all right wide things start getting questionable question mark question mark question mark all right narrow to wide narrow to wide all right narrow you see the narrow to wide okay Surge off the 200. See? Color change off the 200. There's your risk unit. All right? Boom. All right. You know this now. You know this. Look at how we went from narrow to wide, way up there. You see that? Way up there. Way up there. Remember, you can get wide. You can't stay wide. You can get wide. You can't stay wide. All right, traders. Step number seven. Journal 20 trades by 20 trades. This is very, 
very key. Now, let me talk to you about this. This is important. Let me talk to you about this, guys. You are going to have to study your past trades in order to make your future trades better. However, you can't study one by one. That does not work. In fact, that can cause damage. Listen to me carefully, traders. You study in blocks of 20 trades. This is the most effective way to make the next 20 trades better. You see, I teach my traders that 20 trades is equivalent to one step in the journey. Not one trade, not five trades. 20 trades is equivalent to making one step in the journey toward trading mastery. You've got to get to 20. Then when you get to 20 trades, we're going to go back and review the trades. And this is what you're going to do. You've got your 20 trades. You're going to find the biggest losing trade of the 20 trades. That's one thing you're going to do with the 20. Where's my biggest loss? Now go over that trade. Review it again. I bought here. I bought the surge here. I put the stop there. Go over it as if you're reliving that trade. I want you to find out why was that trade the biggest loss? Did you buy two or three lots when you should have done one? Did you add too many times and got too heavy in the play? Did you take a bar that was too long and then when it got stopped out, you got you lost too much? What's the reason behind this trade being a bigger loss than all the others? When you find that, kill it. Murder it. When you find the reason that that trade stands out bigger than all the other losses. Your only mission in life is to do the next 20 trades without committing that mistake. If you can get through another 20 trades without committing the mistake you found in the last 20 trades, you have sped up the day you become a master. You kill your errors 20 trades by 20 trades. Now, listen to me carefully. I have to talk to you about this. You can't work on one mistake or one more than one mistake or one error at a time. So every 20 trades is dedicated to eliminating a single error found in the past 20 trades. So that now... Every 20 trades has a special purpose in your trading life. It's just not like, I'm just buying and selling and hope I win. Da, 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 da. No, you're placing every trade with one mission in mind. I can't commit that error I made last 20 trades. Get through this trade without committing that error. It doesn't have to be a winning trade. Just don't commit that error. Trade one. Next trade, you got to consciously say, I'm not going to commit that error on trade number two. Okay, got trade number two. Trade number three, good. Trade number four, trade number 16, trade number 18, trade number 20, boom. After trade number 20, if you have not committed that error, it is gone forever. Boom. You have just jump-started your journey toward mastery. Now you're going to take the 20 trades, the new set of 20 trades, and you're going to do it again. You kill the, the error from the last 20, but now you've got a new set of 20. What's the biggest loser there? Maybe you don't find one. Um, review, I always prefer that you review, start to review from the losing trades is maybe in this set of losing, losing trades, 
you you look to discover what's my average loss on all of my losing trades. I lost 11 times out of the last 20 trades. What's the, let me add up all of my losses of the 11 trades and divide by 11 to get my average loss per losing trade. Can I improve on this in the next 20 trades? So if my average loss was $48, what if I now make my maximum loss per trade $48 for the next 20 trades. That should drop your average. When you drop your losing average, your profits go up. And so it's things like this that we work on every 20 trades. My traders are taught that every trade must have a purpose beyond winning or making money. In fact, the bigger purpose is what are you eliminating with this trade? What are you killing? What demon are you annihilating? What mistake is this trade dedicated to eliminating? And this gives deep purpose to every trade. It's just not simply, let me just see if I win money. It gains, a, a more, it gains almost a spiritual meaning that you're, you're, you're trying your best to do the trade properly, but you're also killing something that needs to be killed from the past. And now your journey toward growing and being better really speeds up because every trade has this purpose. Every trade is dedicated you, this is the work that you put into this. These are the things that virtually no one out there is doing. And that's why there's 92% failure rate. No one's putting the proper work in. No one's reviewing the last 20 trades. No one's going into the next 20 trades knowing precisely how I'm going to conduct the next 20 trades knowing precisely what I'm going to cross off. I'm going to cross this out of my life starting the next 20 trades. I should never be able to ask you at any point in your life, what are you working on? And you not tell me. I should be able to, after this, I should be able to say, John, so talk to me. What's going on with your trading? Well, Oliver, I'm on my seventh set of 20 trades. Excellent, John. I'm on the 16th trade of my seventh 20 set, and I'm just about, I'm only four trades away from eliminating this demon. Now, that's the way you should answer me. That tells me that you're, you're putting the proper work into becoming a master. You know which set of 20 trades you are in your life. You know what number of the 20 trades you're on. And you know specifically what you're murdering, what you're eliminating, what you're annihilating from your life. This is how you make every trade count. No trade is wasted. It's powerful. Journal, 20 trades by 20 trades. Judge your trading life in blocks of 20 trades. Later, you can become, you know, even a little fancy with it. You want to have 20 winning trades, 20 losing trades, 20 surge bar trades, 20 color change trades so my point is that if you are not reviewing your past with the idea of utilizing your immediate future to create a better 
set of 20 trades. You're just one of these random floating traders. They don't have a map. They don't have a guide. They have nothing except hope. And hope is a dangerous thing. All right? We don't want to rely on hope. We hope one day we get better. We hope one day trading improves. I hope one day I stop losing. It doesn't happen with hope. It happens with 20 trade by 20 trade reviews. That is step number seven. All right? Serious talk traders. Serious talk. All right, let's go. All right. Then, I forgot something with the 20 trades. What you're trying to do while you're killing an error that was made during the last 20 trades with this 20 trades, you also want to determine, am I profitable at the end of this 20 trade set? You don't have to be profitable after five trades or eight trades, but after 20, you should be profitable traders. There's something wrong if you've done 20 trades and you don't have more money on the 20th trade than what you started on the first trade, something's wrong. Find it and let's get it identified and let's kill it during the next 20 trades. Now, get this. There, if you keep killing demons, so this 20 trades, you killed a demon from the last 20 trades. And then another 20 trades, you killed the demon you found from this 20 trades. If you kill four to five demons, you're going to be profitable because it's those demons that are actually blocking your profitability. Because when, But when you eliminate them and push them out of the way, they're no longer blocking. And so you're going to get more and more refined. You're going to knock out the, the grossest demons at first, then the the more subtle demons you're going to start identifying, the beautiful ones that actually don't even look like they're really demons. They look gorgeous. You know, those demons tend to be on the profit side. The gross ones tend to be on the losing side. The beautiful demons tend to be on the winning side. I'll give you an example of a beautiful demon. A beautiful demon might force you to snatch at your profits too quick. So you're profitable, but you're not anywhere near as profitable as you should be because you snatch at your profits too fast. And then you kick yourself as you watch your trade go and produce a fortune. And then you realize, like, I'm profitable, but I'm leaving too much money in the market. And that's that demon that pops up and says, well, remember the last time you tried to last longer in your winning trade and you lost everything and you're like yeah i don't want to lose this game you snatch at it and that demon smiles and say that a boy yeah we did it now, that's a beautiful demon because it's a profit demon it's not a loss demon this demon doesn't make you lose this demon just holds back the fortune from you and keeps you small. And so you will 20 trades by 20 trades start off with the gross demons, the obvious ones, the big ones, the the burly ones, and then it'll, you'll start to identify the more refined ones, the beautiful ones, and you'll start knocking those out. But each 20 trades you will be transforming yourself. You will be coming better and better every block of 20 and when you start to get on your fifth block and your sixth block and your seventh block you're going to see the results it's going to show up in your profitability now when you become profitable every 20 trades that's when you change the number 
So when you get to a place where every time I get to the end of 20 trades, I have more money. Sometimes I have a lot more, sometimes I have a little more, but I'm always profitable. That's goal one. Goal number two, now make it 15. Shrink it. Now try to get yourself to the place where you're profitable every 15 trades. And then when you got that down, right, go to 10, then five, and then three. You see, for me, mastery is three. That's the number of mastery to me. People say, Oliver, when you say we're taking a journey toward mastery, what exactly do you mean getting to three? Three is when at the end of every three trades, you have money. You might have money many times after one trade, after two trades, but always, always, always after three trades. And if you can get yourself to that place where you know all I got to do is get to three trades and I have money, that's what I call a master. Now, you can make a living at stage one. I'm profitable every 20 trades. That's fine. But that's not mastery. That's good, but that's not mastery. I'm saying that your goal should be to get to mastery, three. But we start with 20 being the magic number. All right. So now I can go to step eight. We're almost done here, guys. Almost done here. Keep track of your numbers. Guys, this drives me crazy. This drives me freaking insane when I speak to a trader who has no idea what their numbers are, how can you call yourself a serious trader and not know your numbers? I speak to traders that don't even know numbers exist for a trader. Like, they, they, they give me this confused look like, Oliver, what do you mean numbers? I'm like, what, are you serious? Like, you don't know what your average losing trade is? How, traders, how can you ever get better if you don't know what your average losing trade is. That is a number that you should know every weekend. Every Friday, you should, you should get all those losing trades, add them together, and you got to find what was my average loser losing trade this week. Because Monday, your, your goals are going to be based on whether or not you have to improve on that number. How do you progress if you don't know what your sharp ratio is? If you don't know what your win-loss ratio is? I, I, it's, it baffles me to no end. When I meet people who call themselves traders and they have no concept of what their numbers are, which means that they don't know who they are themselves. Your numbers are who you are as a trader. That's your fingerprint. That's your reflection. Every trader has a reflection. Like the body has a reflection in a mirror. Well, your trading body has a reflection and the reflection are these numbers. Do you understand? You must know things like your sharp ratio. You must know things like your average loss per trade. You must know things like your average win per trade. You must know things like what's my most profitable stock. You must know things like what's my worst profitable stock. You must know things like what's the best time of day for me. Do I do better in the morning and then I fall apart in the afternoon? Do I do better in the latter part of the day and I suck in the beginning of the day? Like if you don't know these things, how do you maximize your growth? How do you get better? What day of the week are you the most profitable? Do you know that? You should. What's your worst freaking day of the week? Like you've got 40 weeks to look at. All right, what day of the week consistently comes up the worst day? Maybe you want to trade a little lighter on that day. Maybe with this stock that contains 80% of your losses, maybe you want to drop that stock. The stock that 
is producing 70% of your wins, maybe you want to trade that stock a little more frequently. This price range that's giving you trouble, maybe you want to trade less in that price range. This day that seems to, for whatever reason, cyclically comes up as the worst day of the week, maybe you want to trade lighter or not at all. For a while, not forever. If your average loss per trade is just a little too big, maybe this upcoming week I make an adjustment and change my maximum loss per trade, which is going to drop that average. These are the things that you must know and do if you expect to be on a progressive journey toward mastery. This is the work, traders. It doesn't happen overnight, and it certainly just doesn't happen all by itself. But in these days, so many people, they don't want to put in any work. They want the lottery. You know, they float from one mentor to the next. They float from one book to the next, one course to the next, because it's not happening right away. All I have to do is tell, all I have to say to that is this. Wherever you go, if you don't change you, wherever you go, there you'll find yourself again. You'll change the mentor and go to a different mentor, but you'll find the same you with the new mentor again. You'll go from this course to the next course but you'll find, you'll eventually find the same you in the new course that was in the old course. The new book is read by the same you if you don't change. And most people are floating from one thing to the other, never willing to change who they are, but willing to change everything else. They want to cheat the system doesn't work this way traders this comes about working on you working on your discipline working on your ability to follow the plan working on your ability to keep your losses limited to one bar working on your ability to play only in the direction of the 20 period moving average This is work on you, and you become better, and then you take the better you into the market, and then the market responds to the better you. Everyone's trying to work on the market instead of working on them. But you have to become more disciplined. You have to become more rule-based. You have to become more seasoned. You have to become more intelligent. You have to become more experienced. And then you take that better you into the market to get better results. But if you stay who you are, you can change everything else. Mentor, book, course, strategy, indicators, trading platform, friends. You can change your wife. You can change your husband. You can change your relationships. You can change your clothes. You can change where you live. You can change everything. But if you stay the same, you will eventually find yourself the same you over and over and over again, no matter where you go. <laughs> this is the work. And I want to help you get it done. That's my job, is to help you get it done. Do you understand, traders? Do you understand what I'm, what I'm preaching to you? Let me know. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Are you hearing me? Or is it going in one ear and out of the other? You got this? You got this, traders? You got this? <laughs> All right.
Good. I'm looking. I'm, I'm going to see here. I'm going to see you tell me. Yes, 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 yes. Good. All right. Someone was asking me, Oliver, I see the question here. What percentage do we lose if we always buy the color changes near the near the 20 period moving average this every trader is different your 20 trades near the 20 is going to reveal what your numbers are and if you don't like those numbers let's find out why let's start with the biggest losing losing trade and you can go to the next losing trade and the next losing trade. And you'll find the reason why it's not working. You will find it. All right? But that's the interesting thing about trading is that this is such a personal journey that one trader can get marvelous results doing the same thing another trader is getting bad results on. And it's because it's such a personal journey. It's not the strategy that necessarily makes you good or bad. It's the hands that the strategy is in. It's not the hammer and the saw and the screwdriver that makes the carpenter good. It's the carpenter, his skill, his experience that flows through the hammer, the saw, and the screwdriver. If you put the hammer, the saw, and the screwdriver in the hands of someone who is not a carpenter, they might kill themselves. It's not the strategy as much as it is who has the strategy. Is the person with the strategy disciplined? Is the person with the strategy calm, doesn't experience fear in a trade, doesn't get shaken out? Who has the strategy. Everyone wants to know this. Everyone wants to know, well, is the strategy very consistent, Oliver? Are your strategies good? No. Are you good? My strategies will serve you if you are good. The Just like the carpenter's tools serve the carpenter that's good. And I'm teaching you how to become good with these steps. All right. Boom. <laughs> yeah. I get so freaking passionate about this, guys. All right. Step number eight, keep track of your numbers. Guys, look, this is an example of one of my traders. So take, take a quick look at this. This trader has done 117 trades during this period, right? He's not showing the period that he grabbed here, but 117 trades, right? The volume, 82,000 shares. Gross profit, 6,000. Net profit, really nice, $5,800, right? Best trade, he knows his best trade is Facebook. Worst trade is Square. Company called Square. All right. His batting average. This is where I pay a lot of attention here. Batting average. He's got a 55, 56% batting average. His win-loss ratio is 1.63. That basically means that for, for every... $1 loss, he's got a $1.63 gain. That's why he's profitable. All right? His average losing his average losing trade is 105, but his average winning trade is 172. His in and out average is 14, which is actually not that bad. So, Immediately, I can tell that there's several things here. Um, I would first want him to get this number down. Let's drop this, and it doesn't have to be dropped a lot. Let's get it under 100. 
That's only $6 more. So we're going to do a maximum loss of 100 now, which means that he should be getting out close to $100, $98, $95, $90, at 100 that's being stupid all right so he's gonna so just this little change here will skyrocket this number all right now after we get this more under control all right i want him to focus on extending this which is going to extend that. So I would start working. I want him to work on the profit side. How do we get you to stay in a winning trade longer? Let's see if you are selling out or too soon. Let's go over your last 20 winning trades and let's see where you ended the trade and if a big percentage of those trades went on for much bigger gains that you left that money in the market. But see, I can look at these numbers and know precisely what the trader needs to, needs to focus on. And the trader should be able to look at these numbers and know precisely what to focus on as well. You've got to know your numbers. All right? This is the graphical performance of this trader. All right? These, these are the, this is every day. So this is his graph of PL. Now notice that when he loses, he only loses one day. You don't see, well, he lost two days here, but you rarely see two days in a row, and you never see three losing days in a row. The trader doesn't allow himself to get out of control. There's no spiraling down. There's no eight, nine, 10, 12 red bars in a row. There's only eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 green bars in a row. Interrupted occasionally by a losing day, but then he gets right back to consistency again. Now this is very decent trading. Notice when the trader had his two losing days that's rare but he came back with a vengeance on day three this is very solid trading this trader does the best trading facebook stop and microsoft probably should kill american express these are fine This is knowing your numbers and instantly knowing what to adjust, what to tweak, what to change. It's not guessing. The numbers are what they are. Um, this is Tuesday. Mark this in Espanol. It's Tuesday. Tuesday is the trader's worst day. Thursday is the trader's best day of the week. The other days are decent too. He's just got to watch himself on Tuesday for whatever reason. Maybe on Tuesday he trades from his bathroom on, you know, and maybe he should stop trading from the bathroom on Tuesday. I don't know. But he's got to watch Tuesdays. All right. There you have it. Know your numbers. When you know your numbers, step nine becomes natural. Have a goal each Monday. All right? And we talked about this with 20, 20 trades by 20 trades. But have a goal every Monday. Whether, that's, whether that goal is okay. Like I told you with this trader here, his goal should be the following Monday. I'm not going to lose more than 100 all right, I'm losing 106. Now I'm going to drop that. Doesn't have to drop it by a lot. I'm going to get under 100. So that would be this trader's goal the next Monday. Now every loss needs to be less than 100, and it will explode the winning side. 
even that little, small, incremental loss change. Knowing your numbers will help you know the goal. For Monday, one goal might be I need to make more money on my winning trades. Maybe you're playing too conservatively. Maybe you should stop playing just 100 shares and start playing more 200 share plays. Maybe you're not adding to plays when you're supposed to be adding to plays. Make that a goal. I'm going to add more to my winning plays. As long as I'm not adding when the stock goes wide, as long as I'm still relatively in a narrow state, I have to focus on adding. These are some of the things that you can, you know, establish as weekly goals for yourself. But you've got to know your numbers in order to come up with these weekly goals. The numbers reveal your weak spot. Spots. The numbers reveal what you need to improve on, what you need to maximize. Do you, re do you realize that sometimes, traders, that it is easier to accentuate something that you're doing good? It is easier to do that than fix something that you're doing bad. So sometimes knowing your numbers can just reveal, I need to do more of this and do less of that. You don't always have to fix a problem. You just stop doing it altogether. Why sometimes bother improving your trading a stock that's killing you? If, you're, if, if American Express is the stock that's killing you, don't try necessarily to become good at trading American Express. Eliminate American Express. Boom. Done. Instantly. Now accentuate Facebook. The trades that you were doing in American Express, throw that number into Facebook. You're doing well with that. Sometimes it's better to accentuate what your numbers reveal as you're doing good instead of improving on what you're doing bad. Sometimes you have to improve, but sometimes you can just eliminate. So very good, good point to remember. So we need a goal each Monday, guys. You should never go into a Monday without knowing what you're supposed to be working on every trade. What you're supposed to be focused on. It takes more than being focused on just winning. You're focused on eliminating something that is not proper. You're focused on improving something that needs to be improved in addition to winning with the trade. And as I mentioned, in this way, each trade takes on a very important purpose. All right, traders. And last, but certainly not least, step number 10. Don't trade with small needed capital. Small is missing here. It should be there. You cannot trade with a little tiny, tiny piece of money and expect to get good. Now, I know this might depress some of you because some of you might say, well, Oliver, I don't have a decent amount of money. I can fix that. But here's the problem when you trade with needed capital and your needed capital is small. It forces you, traders, it forces you to do the wrong thing. Think about this. You're playing with the rent money. And this adds an extra layer of of psychological fear. This adds an, an extra layer of nervousness because if you lose, it has dire consequences. You might be on the street. If your money is too small, when your money is too small, you will keep your losses too small. 
Now, some people say, but Oliver, isn't that good? Yes, limiting your losses and keeping them small is good, but you can go too far. You can go so far in the direction of losing small that you die from a thousand little tiny cuts because there's a certain point where you have to give your stocks breathing room. They have to be able to bend their knees. They've got to be able to wiggle. You can't put your stocks in a straight jacket and prevent them from even moving and wiggling against you a little bit. You'll get knocked out of the best biggest trades of your life if you're so nervous of losing that you just kill the trade with a little tiny loss all the time only to watch many of them go and deliver the gain that you thought it had the potential of delivering you can't be a nervous nelly trader you can't be a fear-based trader you can't be psychologically um on edge and expect to be a good trader. A small amount of money makes you get out when you're not supposed to get out. It makes you fearful when you're not supposed to fear. Feel. It makes you snatch at your gains. It makes you keep your losses too small. And trading with money that you need, that your family needs, is irresponsible. No one on Wall Street trades with their own money. No one, only novices. I get it all the time. Oliver, I don't want to trade with your money. I want to trade with my money. And I say in the back of my mind, this person has no clue that professionals do not trade with their own capital. Why do you think some of the best traders start hedge funds to not trade their own money? Wall Street, the whole Wall Street's based on trading other people's money. I traded firm capital as a, wall, as, as a trader on Wall Street. I didn't trade my capital. You actually are a better trader when it's not your money. You're a better trader when it's a nice size money so that you don't have to trade like a fear, nervous Nelly trader. You trade much better when it's not yours. You are more responsible with my money than you are with your money. You are smarter with my money. You are safer trading my money than trading your money. You will do more stupid things with your money than you will with my money. You will be more careful with my money. You won't want to disappoint me. This is the old secret on Wall Street, that traders are better when it's not their money. This is why Wall Street firms don't allow you to trade your own money. You can't even trade your own account. It's against the company rules. And if they catch you, you might wind up in jail. You're better when it's not your money. This is a statistical fact, traders. You should not be trading with your capital and especially you should not be trading with your capital if it's little. You can't show up to a gunfight with a little tiny little knife and think you have a chance. It doesn't work that way. I'm just talking facts. All right? Now, I take care of this for all of my traders. I not only train them every single day of their lives, they never stop being trained, ever. And I fund them. I tell every single one of my traders, put your money away. Never will you have to put a single penny into the trading fund, never. I also tell them, I will provide the capital. I'm also gonna share the gains. I mean, I'm a nice guy, but I'm not an idiot. We're in this together as a business. It's your business. I'm investing in your business, but I do get a portion of the trading profits. But you never have to ever go to your wife or your husband and ask, can you 
make a deposit somewhere. You don't have to open up a brokerage account. You don't have to abide by the $25,000 minimum to day trade. You know that's a law, right? That you can't day trade with less than $25,000. So you don't have to meet that rule. My account meets that rule. So I tell my traders, you never have to contribute. You... I will take 100% of the losses. So now you don't have to be fearful. We share the gains. And this gets them beyond this. The game is already difficult enough without playing with limited capital and without playing with capital that you need. Right? No one, no professional does this. Now, I know there are traders who don't have an interest in trading my capital, but have more of an interest in me training them. Okay, then you just don't take advantage of my capital and the trainings there. But I am most interested in us going into business together. So that's what I want to talk to you about next, guys. Um, I want to talk to you about how we do this together in a business. I want you to start your own business, your own trading business. I want to fund your trading business. I will put the capital up. I will train you every day. I will put you in a group of traders that you're with every single day that are progressing. I will put you in front of master traders, I will be one of your mentors. You will have a variety of mentors that guide you every single day of your life. But I want you to understand that this will be your business, which means that you can trade any time you want. You can trade any day you want. You can trade as long as you want, as short as you want. I have many traders that trade 20 minutes a day. I have many traders that trade all day long. I have some traders that only trade one day a week. It's your business. It is not my business. I just invest in your business. I make sure that you are well equipped with the proper amount of capital. And I make sure that as long as you have my capital in your hands, you are going to get trained and educated every single day of your life. I will do everything in my power to make sure that you are utilizing my capital correctly. Because if I don't teach you properly, who loses? I lose. You don't lose. I lose the capital. So I take 100% of the risk, traders. Your risk is time. All right? And as I mentioned earlier in, the, in, in this session, this is what you're going to be responsible for doing. I will teach you every tactic, every technique. After you, after you learn all the tactics, all the techniques, all the strategies, you start at training level. All you have to do is reach that $3,000 goal and you are fully graduated. And now the business starts for real. You will get 40% of all gains as you work your way through these levels, 3,000, then 6,000, then 10,000, and 20. And there's more levels. It's just that I don't have room to show them. All right? There's 11 levels. I'm just showing you the first four. You will get 40%. The firm gets 60%. But remember, you don't risk ever a single penny of your own family's money all right and that's the business now guys look these are the programs there is a cost associated with it i wish that weren't the case but it is it's business okay traders my most popular program is self-start trader program that program covers everything it is covers every tactic every technique every strategy it covers lifelong trading training every single day it covers the live trading room monday through friday where you have professional traders guiding you teaching you developing you nurturing you 
two study sessions, pri two semi-private study sessions together with me, where we get together just like we, we have today, and we go over trades, we go over what you're doing, we go over and delve into what needs to be corrected, what needs to be adjusted. All of my past sessions you have access to as well. You have access to full funding starting from 50000 all the way up to millions of dollars should you work your way through those processes. And you get a 40% payout on all profits paid, paid out monthly to you. Guys, $1,700. There are people that have courses that are $40,000, $50,000, $10,000, $5,000, $3,000. And with just a course and they say goodbye at the end, this is for life. In fact, break this cost down over five years. What's $1,700? What is that monthly? What's your monthly cost to become a professional trader with full funding? Over a five-year period, that's how you really should look at this thing. All right? There's 60 months in five years. $1,700 divided by 60 months, that's $28 a month. For $28 a month, you get trained every day of your life. Nurtured, developed every day of your life, full access to funding. And it never stops. 40% payout. And so my, the way I would teach you to look at this, the way I would encourage you to look at this, do you have the potential to make more than $28 a month with this? And if you can make more than $28 a month, during this, doing this. If you think that you that this has the potential of getting you to the place where you can make more than $28 a month, guys, you can make more than $28 in a minute. All right, then this program has is a very, very low cost. There's the live trading camp as well, which some people do together. They do the self-start program along with the live trading camp where I take you under my wing and teach you specifically my number one skill, which is how to trade the first 20 minutes of the day. Many of my traders want that specialty. They want to be done with their trading in 20 minutes. That's what I became famous for on Wall Street. That's what built my reputation. I was one of the best traders in the first 20 minutes of the trading day virtually every single day. And I want you to have that specialty. And that's what I do with you in the live trading camp. But if many people do them together, some people do self-start first and later, somewhere down the line, do live trading camp. It's your choice. But this cost, $28 a month over five years, that's nothing. Now, look at this. For the next 72 hours, I'm looking for the people who have really been touched by this event. I'm looking for people who feel like they found what they want to do. I'm looking for serious-minded people who are going to put the necessary work in. Those people are usually come float to the top in the first 72 hours. And so for 72 hours... I'm rewarding those people with $1,300 price. That's insane. $1,300 divided by 60 months, that's $21 a month. Guys, I can get you to a place where you make way more than $21 a month. Incredible. This program used to be sold in the United States for $15,000. I just want it now accessible to more people throughout the world. Guys, $1,300, it's 
it's a it's a it's a big family dinner with wine. You can lose thirteen hundred dollars in a single trade, in a week, in a month. This is for life. And you don't have to put thirty thousand, twenty five thousand dollars into a brokerage account to try it on your own. So instead of twenty five or thirty thousand dollars in a brokerage account, you put up thirteen hundred dollars. And you have double that, $50,000. This is the professional way to go. This is the structured way to do this. And get this. For those who sign up in the next 72 hours, I'm going to give you the 60%. And I will take the 40%. Now you're the top partner in the business. Now you earn the most in the arrangement. Anyone after 72 hours, I will take the 60%. But if you sign up to the program, if you're serious about this, and you sign it within the next 72 hours, you're going to get 60% of the gains. And guess what? What else? I'm going to give you 100% of the gains until... You're going to get 100% of the gains until this cost is back in your pocket. So for the first $1,300, I don't get anything. You're going to get your $1,300 back. And after you've earned your $1,300 back, I will start taking my share. So you have the ability to make this program free. You have the ability to get every single penny you put in back. Now, traders, it costs me to pay my best traders to work with you, to pay staff members that support you, to pay for technology and equipment. It costs. And this helps me defray that cost. But you can get it all back if you do the right thing. If you do the 10 things that I mentioned here, you will be able to get this $1,300 back, making this program free, and then you will get 60% of the gains after, and I will take 40%. Now that's being fair. That's being more than fair. And so therefore, you have several goals. Goal number one, get trained and get educated and get past that training level. Get past that training level. That's goal number one. Goal number two, get your money back. Get your whole cost back. That's goal number two. Goal number three, make us both a fortune. Those are your three goals. Graduate, goal number one. Goal number two, get your cost back. Goal number three, make us a fortune. Remember, it's your business. You trade when you want, how often you want. This is about independence and financial freedom. Now, I know this is not for everyone, but there are people that this is perfectly for. And there are people I know who's listening to me right now that's serious about this, and this resonates with them. You can do this, guys. TradingOliverVelez.com. For more information. And I do want to let you know that, traders, there's a lot of... Um, there are a lot of false accounts that will try to trick you into believing that you are talking to me. But I'm going to let you know that anytime 
that someone claims to be me reaches out to you and asks you for money, that is not me. I will never ask you for money. I will never call you up out of the blue or contact you out of the blue and ask you anything. I might respond to a question you ask me, but I will never initiate. If someone initiates with you in my name, that is not me. If someone asks you for money, to send money somewhere, that is not my name. That is not me. It's fake. These are the only people right here. Take a snapshot. These are the only people. There might be two others not on this list based in New York, but for the most part, this is my team. Traders, you can do this. I know you can. Starting with these 10 steps you can do this traders you could potentially change your life forever you can enjoy an independence and a freedom that most people only dream of it's not easy i will never tell you that it's challenging you're gonna have to put work in but my god if you put the work in and you do what I've taught you here today, your life potentially will never be the same. I want this for you. Let's do it. Boom. Love you guys. Love you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Traders, you know that Every time I'm afforded the opportunity to speak in a mic on stage or what have you, I really do try my best to leave you with something that you can potentially use for the rest of your life. I hope that I've done that here today. This is not fluff. I know that you can be anywhere else in the world but you're here with me today and that is not something that I take lightly so thank you very much thank you for your attendance thank you for your attention thank you for your loyalty thank you for following me these are things that are not lost on me love you guys and I'm looking forward to you guys enjoying the, joining the family okay boom